Hello and welcome to the Green Collider Masterclass webinar. My name is Karina Posch and I'm working at the nonprofit association Auxilium in Austria, who is a partner organization in the Green Collider project. Today, I will be your host with the kind assistant of my colleague. This webinar is part of the Erasmus Plus project Green Collider and its first project result, the Green Collider Masterclass. We continue our webinar series today with module four of the masterclass which is uh, focused on the topic examples of sustainable thinking and practice. The module has been developed by our project partners in Italy uh, at Taste Roots, as well as our project partners in Slovenia at the school center Scofia Loca in Slovenia. Today we have six experts with us who will present interesting keynotes about sustainable thinking in business, in practice, in schools, and we will also hear about very interesting projects. If you have any questions to our keynote speakers, please write them in the chat and we'll bring them to their attention. So let's start. Our first speaker is Mr. Francesco Saralli with his presentation about sustainable thinking in business. Francesco, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot. Uh, uh, first of all, I would love to uh, share my screen. And so, uh, Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Francesco Zaralli, uh, CEO of uh, Taste Roots uh, Cooperative Society, uh, which has born as a, a, a business that uh, was dealing with retailing then after a shift as a support um, for companies. Um, personally, I'm a project manager. Uh, I do fundraising as well as um, supporting businesses to place their ideas uh, in the market and also the product in the market. So basically we are, uh, we could be assumed as an SME and as a cooperative society that groups various um, experts and consultants on uh, different fields, uh, digital ones, um, fundraising, project management, Francesco, I think we yes. lost the connection for a second. Can you please repeat the sentence? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, so our uh, our company is it's a company that's um, that's basically uh, based in Central Italy, and it's divided into two different brands. One is dedicated to the retailing of products, and it's called Taste Rich as the company, and the other one is Apple Development Consulting. Uh, within this umbrella, uh, there are gathered, uh, grouped various um, various consultants. So we covering a different range a range of um, competencies. Uh, as I was saying, personally, I'm a project manager. I've been developing several projects. Some of those uh, are going to be introduced in this uh, presentation because our main target is to um, support the innovation that that's going to serve. Uh, the twin transition of businesses. Um, businesses that are mainly based in the primary sector and uh, recently uh, also minimum, uh, a small part of our activity focuses also on manufacturing. So as I was saying, it's, uh, it's been running for five years um, and um, uh, basically, as I was saying, uh, we train the staff of businesses to face this transition but also to be able to, um, let's say, um, be more resilient to the market change, um, then um, we assess those companies and support them to face the both green and digital transition. And then we, we give them all this technical support, delivering services which are toward uh, digitalization mainly. So how can we define uh, sustainability in business? Uh, it's a company strategy basically to reduce uh, their impact in the environment. But also we can assume that also is um, sustainability in business refer also to a wider spectrum of uh, um, let's say shades of sustainability, uh, some, somehow also involving the society, around the SME, but also the HR working in it. So it's quite nice that in this session, we're gonna see different, uh, let's say, shades of it. So the training aspect, but also how technology in my case is gonna, technologies and approaches and strategies are gonna change 
this uh, approach. So over the uh, over the past few years, we have been working on um, several uh, projects. Um, in our business, uh, in our best practices, we can assume there are some that are quite relevant and representative on how a company can shift uh, a way to produce, a way to think a market, a way to think an industry, to therefore move toward a more sustainable production. What do I mean? Um, specifically, um, one about one year and a half ago, uh, we started a work for a, for a, a company called uh, Data Futuro, uh, which works in a, uh, operates in a specific sector. Um, the sector is aquaculture. So uh, let's say that the production, I'm sorry, I'm just living in a really lively space. So sometimes the dogs around. Um, so there are, um, let's say various, uh, uh, various industries we have been serving, uh, but specifically in the aquaculture field, uh, there is, um, there is this uh, this company which has been uh, I am really uh, important to define what uh, what can do an aquaculture company to shift um, to to a more sustainable production. I mean, um, let's say the production in, in aquaculture can in, use uh, several environments. Let's say the lagoon system is one of those. Especially when we refer uh, aquaculture in Manila plum seeds production, uh, what happens is that normally the lagoon areas are overexploited because uh, if you're not familiar with it, uh, basically the seeds that we use uh, to then produce the the clams we're gonna eat in restaurants or at home, they come from a natural environment. Those natural environment. In the past few years, have been overexploited and really uh, put into a really uh, high pressure due to human activity. So, scratching the bottom of, uh, bottom of lagoons and gathering and collecting those seeds has mm, recently provoked the depopulation of those areas, the the decrease of biodiversity. But also, among all those things, uh, there have been. Um, the influence on the seeds per se of the changing of parameters of water. What do I mean with it? Uh, basically, uh, as we know in uh, sea water, there might be uh, a high percentage of metal. This uh, metal and other pollutants that have been affecting the food security on one side, but also um, the production uh, per se, and also the mortality of uh, the seeds that we would have used to, to produce. Uh, and especially in our country, uh, this production is quite crucial because then we produce the 96% of the uh, of the clum, uh, um, the clums that are in the European market, and also with the decrease of the availability of the raw material or the seed that we would have needed, uh, the whole sector would have been colla uh, collapsing. But also. Um, the other problem we had is that in the main area of production, which is the Adriatic Sea, especially the lagoon of the Adriatic Sea, the changing of parameter of water has been endangering the quality of what we were eating. Uh, of course, uh, then um, what happens, like the, the, the technical, um, the application of systems which are on, used on others, another sector, but also uh, rethinking the production as, as it is. So not considering the natural environment as the sole place we could source the seed has been bringing this company to um, model a supply chain that was thinking the production of the seed on the first part and the delivery of the, uh, let's say, um, uh, stabilized pre and seed and also the end product uh, in a specific environment. Normally, uh, there are on the coastal areas non-exploited areas that are mainly agriculture for agriculture purposes. So the model the company has been um, um, producing and um, establishing with our support 
thanks also with, uh, to the support to the I, uh, EIT food program, is to uh, basically dig uh, ponds within these areas and use the water of the sea to, to be in a closed circulation system, controlled and monitored, um, but also monitored not only for the health of the product, the product, because of course clams are living beings, but also monitoring the impact of the production on the environment surrounding it. Specifically, when we say the impact of the production is because salt water cannot be discharged in, in the inland area. So uh, basically the, the system takes the water from the sea in a nearby area, filters all the water and put it back in the sea. Of course, cleared with biofilters from all the possible nitrates and leftovers of the production. Going back to the seed, of course, in these ponds, which are sort of river flowing into uh, a, an inland allotment, to then control the seed and their health, the seeds are um, basically produced in a sort of captivity area in a, in a laboratory in which um, the, the reproduction is fostered, the seeds are farmed, uh, and then they are um, sold like we would have done uh, imaging an uh, uh, and scenario in agriculture when, uh, when the farmers sow uh, seeds for plants, then aquaculture farmers sow uh, seeds, can sow the seed of, of clams to then be uh, nourished and then uh, grow, uh, breed, and then sold in the market. This is strongly based on uh, an SDG principle, which is the protection of, of the, the, the natural environment, because we are not anymore using the, the coastal area to source those seeds. We are using our own um, area, in, inland area, we are, uh, breeding plants, we are farming them, with not, without harming the biodiversity of the natural environment and still contributing to an economy. So on these two parts, why this is a, a best practice, really? First of all, we contribute to the, the, to the food security, which is one of the European priorities so far, is one of the most important. It's also stated in the farm to fork strategy, as it, as, as it stated, that the, uh, uh, the production so far has to take into account the um, the sustainability of the process. And this is a best practice because it serves two goods, the goods of the environment and the goods of an industry, making it more sustainable and also safe for customers. They're gonna rely on that uh, product and also safe for the environment because of all the things we've been about. So, as we are saying, we guarantee the uh, safe, safety of the environment. We monitor the environment, we monitor the production to then deliver products that are food se secure and, and guarantee the security and uh, the security of the environment. Among our um, best practices, we also would mention another uh, another company we, we've been working for, we work currently for, which is the winery. So um, let's say that um, in, um, in food production and, and in general, uh, food and beverage production have to deal with a, with a massive um, um, let's say issue, which is how do we make our production and our retail more sustainable and to be accountable in the eye of the consumers and also to reduce the cost of production, but also to not, to, to not do just greenwashing, but to be actually sustainable. Because if a production is sustainable, especially in the wine world, uh, I come, our company set in a, in a wine region. And can you imagine harming an environment like this? How can change the quality of the product per se? Not even mentioning to the, to the, the harm that a production can um, do to the environment around. 
So to answer part of this question, this winery has uh, developed a project and, and start to redesign the packaging. So we have to mention that a business is uh, in the primary sector, in the manufacturing is a really complex matter. It starts from the production, from the raw material, and it ends up not just with delivery of the product, but also to the market marketing and positioning of the same product. If I have to market a product, uh, then I have to consider which are my values. And when I'm designing a packaging, for instance, that is going to help me out to the market my product and also to contribute to be an added value of what I'm delivering, then I have, I have to take into consideration what sustainability can mean at that stage. Um, this one year so has basically thought to uh, work on the design of the bottle, simple as that, to work on a lightweight bottle, which means I'm using, first of all, a material that can be easily recycled. recycled. Uh, in which all the rest applied on it is less than the 5% of the overall material use. I'm talking about the labels and so on. But also we can then um, work on the uh, weight of the bottle, which means I have to use less glass. It's not needed the same amount of glass that makes a bottle weigh in total 1.3 kilos. I have to reduce it. So the project has started with the selection of a supplier. This supplier uh, is called Vetreria Etrusca, uh, with whom basically um, the, the project has started since the way the, the supplier produces and where it's placed. First of all, the, the supplier has an, has an interesting uh, factory uh, because it's uh, it's a completely in a in a, in a uh, surrounded by a wood a wood that the same uh, factory has been helping to populate uh, to compensate this is a form of compensation but uh, um, aside of this that somehow sometimes sounds of greenwashing uh, the innovation in this factory lies on the use of a uh, renewable source of energy because all the bottles that the winery have, have been uh, working on with the design have been made in a uh, setting that was um, basically uh, supplied purely with solar energy most of the energy used comes most of almost the total comes from renewable sources of energy and especially solar energy and thanks to the um, to the system of um, collection, uh, let's say preservation, conservation of energy, uh, the company can save up to 75 tons uh, of CO2 emission a year, which makes a massive difference for the production and, and, and the environment surrounding it. This is not the only one case. As I was saying, we, recently we approached the uh, let's see the manufacturing, uh, the manufacturing um, sector, uh, working on a, a regional green tax, uh, the regional green tax project, for which we have been uh, gathering various uh, needs and working together with several regions. Uh, India project are involved about 11 regions, ranging from uh, north in Portugal to um, the region regions of Romania, uh, Italy, like Tuscany and, and Piedmont, um, and also other in Belgium, Holland, in the Netherlands and France, uh, to then, re, re, uh, let's say, um, respond to one big need of, of the textile sector. Uh, we have currently, um, uh, we've overproduced uh, basically a textile waste. Textile waste is produ produced on two different levels. There is the production part, and then there is also the, the, the discard, the dis discharge of, uh, um, let's say the disposal, sorry, of, of clothes that people uh, buy and, and bin. Uh, of course, um, with fast fashion, you may be familiar with, I won't mention brands, but 
uh, with cheap clothes and um, the decrease of prices to make clothing more accessible, um, the turnover of, and of use of these clothes is becoming quicker. So we buy and dispose, buy and dispose, and this is um, this is um, basically uh, provoking, together with the leftovers of production, um, a massive uh, um, harm to the environment. Uh, in the textile sector, there are many uh, technologies interacting in it, and there are uh, many uh, elements, uh, chemical elements. Uh, um, most of the clothes we use and dispose then sometimes, most of them are not recyclable really. And um, basically, um, our problem is then how we are gonna stop those and then dispose those. Uh, part currently part are burned. Uh, some others are uh, taken to landfill in some remote also parts of the world. But how long can we carry um, using this system, which is mainly based on a linear process? You may have heard of the two different kind of supply chain or production models. One is linear, so basically from the birth to the grave, and there is no way to, 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 to then use the, the, the leftovers of it or what the, 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 uh, the, the, non, the, the disposed part. And that is the circle one. So we produce or we design a product to then be able to be reused in the future. We produce it. And then when it is at uh, the end of life, it gets into the circle again to, be, to then be reprocessed and redesigned, reused, and so on. So, so far, most of the textile production is based on a linear model. When we're gathering the, 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 the idea that we could have supported uh, textile sector to, uh, let's say, respond to the need of um, uh, uh, going more sustainable on one side, but also to become um, a, a more uh, independent market because within the European Union, raw materials in textile are really hard to find. We only, for instance, we only produce the 1% of cotton in Europe that is actually used for uh, our clothes, the clothes of Europeans. The rest is sourced somewhere else with unknown uh, control on what is the sustainability like. And I'm referring to sustainability in, in the most wide sense, which means social, which means environmental. So how can we then be more sustainable in this sense? We can build our circular within uh, the same um, 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 say uh, the same continent. How? By checking which are the pitfalls in six main blocks of the, the circular supply chain. To work on those, then put together the technologies which are still in Europe, uh, which are uh, working on their own, to put them on to all together in the same on the same table, and then set a path which goes from the design to the disposal how to get a product how to get a textile shred it how to reproduce it how to redesign it and then to deliver it so basically by putting together all these uh, different technologies we've been building thanks to this pro project a, uh, um, a a chain which goes through this whole region and the project basically helps the SMEs inside this the project to scale up their technology. If I have something that can serve a goal that goes through sustainability, which is something that can be put into a system that helps the circularity of textile, my technology can be further development, de developed. Uh, bear in mind that ma many of those technologies are basically still in a scale-up process. Uh, they've been tested in a, in a relevant, uh, relevant environment. They respond to a technology readiness level. Because we have 
Uh, when we're talking about technology, we have from a uh, level from one to nine. Those technology range uh, to, from six to seven. So the end part of the scale, they're being uh, tested. They have to go to get to the market to become something that's actually functioning for the economy and functioning for the sustainability of the project. So within the project, the businesses get the support they need to get in the market. Can you hear me? Yes, you can hear you, but so okay. sometimes your internet connection um, is a little bit bad, but I think we can still follow your presentation. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, so um, we can we can then embed uh, into this, this system that the, basically the, the project is, a, is an environment in which we provide uh, advisory uh, and support to the SMEs part of the project. As we intend, the project is, um, is a complex partnership in which there are SMEs to be supported, but there are uh, research center, uh, there are universities, uh, there are regional governments, uh, those parts have to support the SMEs to be part, to build the circularity within the project. Uh, and um, then enable, like supporting this technology, enable them to do the scale up. So we address two things, enabling action, which are the um, coaching and advisory support and training actions. And then all the innovation action that uh, that are provided by the SMEs. Those SMEs are within the same environment. They can talk to each other to then exchange services within the, the circularity. So they can actually contribute to add one step more in the supply chain, which is within a controlled, safe, and environmental, environmentally friendly environment. So with this project, which is going to last three years, uh, it has just started really, um, we want to increase the percentage of uh, recycled post-consumer and also uh, uh, post-production uh, textile, which means the disposed one and the leftovers of the production, uh, addressing issues that are lying on the separation and, and reprocessing of goods. We are doing it thanks to a system that helps businesses to scale up. So if you're asking yourself why this is the best practice to, to be commented, because first of all, it, it enables uh, SMEs to talk to each other, to meet each other and to cooperate with many different technologies to the production of the, uh, of the good. And also uh, it's a best practices, uh, it's a best practice on uh, considering that it's at the European level, this is the first project funded by uh, the I3 instrument uh, released by ISMEA. Um, this instrument is a structural fund, it's a structural in initiative that it's uh, connecting different areas of Europe and making them cooperate. Those areas are classified as developed, in transition, and uh, uh, under development. Those regions have to talk together to guarantee a cohesion and a cohesive growth to, toward a more sustainable production. Uh, specifically, this project responds to the green pillar of the I3 instrument. Um, and it, it, it has been the first project funded, is a pilot action. And it's been uh, now run, going, is going to run for three years. And at the end of it, it is going to have. Um, other initiatives developed within the same region. The regional government are part of it and they support uh, the monitoring as well. And they address needs uh, of, the, of the SMEs in terms of training, for instance, by delivering a specific training initiative toward the IT institution to therefore supply the SME sector, the, 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 the business sector, with um, the competence that are lacking to support the, 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 the twin transition and the green, the green transition specifically, but also other initiative 
uh, established set at regional level to then support the impact of, of the, the regional green tax approach, which means not only the SMEs part of this system are going to benefit of the project, others have to be part of it. So um, to, uh, to finalize the to finalize the um, the presentation, uh, I think I've been in the in the time uh, which was allocated for for my presentation. Um, of course, with the time, um, we will focus on on different uh, on different activities. We have been selecting some of the, uh, in our opinion, interesting. Um, uh, case to bring to the table and to reflect on. Uh, now it's become more more and more crucial to to rethink the way we we actually produce. Uh, micro action are important, so you know there are micro action which support uh, sustainability, but there are also other uh, more uh, let's say. Uh, challenging action which support which have to support it. Uh, those actions lie on the systemic level. Let's say uh, the, the the last example is one of the of the more accountable ones. So it means that basically there is an overall cooperation an overall cooperation of region to rethink an entire sector, and then there is the individual uh, SME which has to rethink the way it produce and it market a product because it serves many purposes. It serves the needs of people to see that a product to respect the environment they live in, partner, but it also answer to the need that the production has to, on, on one side, to optimize the cost of production by being more sustainable, to become more resilient because as you could see now, the energy uh, consumption topic is becoming really important, especially with the last, uh, nowadays not anymore, so last happenings of the war, energy from fossil, no renewable sources has become one of the factors that has been affecting mainly our economy, but also it affects our environment. So how can we respond to that? By rethinking the way we use for instance, energy to process uh, goods to uh, deliver product. Um, that's basically what I feel it's important in, in business, uh, like to then not just focus on the purely image aspect, but then uh, embed technology and to reflect on the way we do things so far to then be able to deliver something more sustainable, resilient, and long-lasting, which is in, in, ensure us uh, that we will um, impact the least possible what's surrounding us. Thanks a lot for, uh, for uh, taking part to, the, to this webinar. Okay. Thank you very much, Francesco, for your presentation. We learned a lot about the business perspective and I uh, would like to give our floor then in a second to our next speaker who will uh, tell us a little bit more about um, the perspective in a school center. So our next speaker is Ms. Veshna Podocznik. She's a professor of chemistry and biology. She teaches science and biology at the school center of Skofia Loka and she is coordinator of mandatory elective subjects at the secondary school of mechanical engineering. She's currently coordinating the sustainable oriented uh, PCYAC project and is also involved in the Green Collider project. And today she's going to talk about sustainable thinking in the school center Skofia Loka. Uh, Vesna, the floor is now yours.
cannot hear you yet. Just a second, please. Oh, okay, no worries, sorry. Can you see the presentation? Not yet. Not yet. No. Okay. Now it will be. Okay. Hello to everyone. Thank you, Karina, for the introductionary presentation of me. Uh, now you can see it. Yes, we can. Thank okay. You. At the beginning, I will briefly introduce uh, School Center Shkofia Loka, uh, what we have done in the field of sustainable development in recent years. I will present projects that have been implemented um, or are still being implemented at school center and which support sustainable development. I will present more detailed the project climate objectives and content in education, which includes the secondary school of mechanical engineering. The secondary school for woodworking is involved in the project Wood Phoenix. And Mr. Dimitri and I will tell us more about this project a bit later on. And finally, I will talk about our plans for the future. School Center Shkofia Loka has four organizational units secondary school of mechanical engineering secondary school of woodworking colleague of mechanical engineering and wood and inter-business education center on the school website we have the vision and goals for our school that reads we strengthen entrepreneurship and innovation and follow new developments and needs in the economy and the labor market. Our goal is to keep pace with the needs of the economy and its development by working together, creating a sustainable, circular, economical and environmentally friendly educational institution. At school, we try to follow this vision as much as possible, which you will be able to hear today. The objectives we want to achieve are as follows. In the area of sustainable development, we want to raise awareness for students and employees. With examples of good practices, we want everyone to think about how to realize personal objectives in a sustainable way. And in the area of sustainable development, we want to strengthen cooperation between school center Shkofia Loka, the local community and the business sector. What have we done in recent years in the area of sustainable development? With the construction and in 2013, the opening 
of a new business business training center, the Red School School Center Skopje Loka set the basis for sustainable development according to modern energy standards, which include new technologies, new machines, tools, installations, and effective building insulation. Heating system implemented with heat pumps, installation of smart lights and weather control blinds, apply smart monitoring systems such as digitalized and energy saving systems and use of rainwater. A, co a, co a comprehensive energy rehabilitation of school center Skofia Loka buildings was also carried out, which included execution of a new heat insulting facade and thermal insulation of the ceiling, including stone wool, replacement of all windows and doors, replacement of the boiler. The heating oil boiler was replaced by a wood chip boiler. Renovation of the heating system. New ventilation system and user awareness. Reconstruction of internal lighting with smart system. Digital monitoring of operations and central control system. In 2018 and 19, we established a learning production laboratory with facilities and laboratory equipment in the field of energy, new machines equipped for digital monitoring of operational data and testing of blockchain technology in educational terms. We have established a charging station for electrical vehicles in the school center area and focused on digitalization in a tool for building industry 4.0 and for increasing the energy and material efficiency of processes. We carried out the renovation and upgrading of the central control system in 2021 and 22 and the working group was set up to optimize the heating system both in boarding school and school when we looked at the effectiveness of the measures implemented we found that we have approximately more than 50% energy savings for heating school center Skofia Loka. Approximately 15% electricity saving compared to the starting point. We have achieved significantly greater living comfort. Systems and devices are also involved in the learning processes of school center Skofia Luka and business business training center. Um, this provides us with an incentive to take further steps towards digitalization and upgrading existing solutions. And this further strengthens the focus on green, circular, and sustainable approach in all segments of the school center's operations. Further on, I will present you some of the projects and examples of good practices that we have carried out at our school. In 2013, the students of the secondary school of mechanical engineering reconstructed the classic smart vehicle into a battery electric vehicle. This vehicle is now 10 years old and it is still working. The car reaches a top speed of around 100 kilometers per hour. 
In 2015, two students from the engineering program created an electric scooter for the final task. In 2020, the students of the car service program reworked the electric wheel, wheelchair for Mr. Ivo Yakovlevich. The project was supported and financed by the nonprofit and environment organization Alta Adria Green from Yesenice, and the processing took place at the Metro Institute in Chesnica, Nikropa. Now we're going to look at a good example of reuse on the video. Students' company, Product Recolor, has produced a sustainable, reusable paint can in 2020. This has reduced in the number of waste cans and contributed to a cleaner environment. Meet Jose. He is a young maker who likes to create new stuff but his workshop is full of dirty brushes and a lot of spray cans, so he never finds the right color. And on top of that, he's producing a lot of waste. Jose, wake up! We have a product that will solve all your problems. It's called Recolor. My team, Yanis and me, we also like to create a new stuff, but instead of using normal brushes and regular spray can, we use our rationary product. It works like a normal spray can, but you can refill it with color and compressed air. We are currently working on our second improved prototype. We have changed the original design to improve versatility and save on the weight of the product. The color is user friendly and can be filled at home. You simply unscrew the lid of the can and power in the correct mixture of paint. Then you close the lid and fill the can with compressed air. After that you simply shake it and use like a normal spray. You will save almost 50% of your money and a lot of your time because you don't need to go back to shop to buy a new color can. Our color can is made from recycled materials. It's filled with compressed air while other cans use harmful gases. If someone wants to dispose of the recolor can, they can bring it back to our company and we'll recycle it. We started with 150 euros of initial capital. In the future, we intend to increase our production and enter the European market. And after that, we would like to present our product to the world as well. Enough talking and try our new product. Let's recall our future. Okay, um, this picture shows a group of students also of a mechanical engineering program started to produce a replica of the petrol and electric uh, go to race go ahead, which is expected to be completed this year and will be dedicated to school promotion. Um, you can read more about this and many other projects on the websites listed on the last slide of this presentation. And now I will present you the project carried out at the school center at the secondary school of mechanical engineering, which is carried out in cooperation with the center for vocational education. 
The aim of this project is to follow the needs of the economy and the economic trend by working together to create sustainable, circular and economically unenvironmentally friendly solutions. The project, the project involves five teachers from different disciplines who are planning and carrying out various activities with students, such as project learning, challenge learning, and learning in nature in the local environment. We have prepared an action plan for the school, which includes the following tasks. We will improve the waste separation system on the level of the entire school center by erecting new bins and waste separation labels. Because we want to achieve not only better waste separation, but also a reduction in waste, we have purchased bottles for students and employees in which they can pour water or bring a drink with them to school. We reduce paper consumption. We will have by summer a place for the disposal of hazardous waste, for example, oil filters, motor oils, waste washes. Uh, we will connect with the econo economy a call and the local community will get the suitcases for water analysis in order to increase the motivation to work with students students will perform the analysis of the water samples they will bring from home to check the quality of the water in their home environment in addition we're going to analyze tap water at school. This will show the students that tap water is drinkable. Um, we will discuss how to provide clean water in the environment and how water supplies are affected by climate changes. We will continue to participate in projects, IA Slovenia, EIT Raw Materials, Girls Go Circular. In the Girls Go Circular project, there is an online platform where students gain knowledge and by solving the quiz, they get a certificate for circular economy. This year, 14 students participated in this project. The two girls completed all the models and obtained all the certificates, and the boys all obtained at least two certificates. We're going to organize and we're going to keep the technical days and open days. We will direct students to produce final tasks, which will include the use of waste materials from the field of mechanical engineering, as well as others. We added a point of sustainable development to the instruct instructions for preparation of the final tasks. At this point, students will have to define what will happen to the waste that will be generated in the preparation of their final task. In the course business and organization, we will encourage students to develop a business model of how we can use sheet metal, waste goods for a new product, reuse of materials in mechanical engineering. Students and employees will be encouraged to use water and electricity savingly. The wasteful bedding from the boarding school 
will be used for cleaning clothes in school workshops. As every year, this year also, we will organize a tour of the treatment plant and the lecture on waste separation, which will be carried out for students by a representative of the company Shkokeloka. In April, we're going to do a cleanup operation. In the summer, we collected clothes left behind at school. The items have been washed and offered to the boarding school students. The work clothes were put into the storage for future students. In the past school year, we invited ecologists without borders who prepared a lecture and a film on the theme of discarded food. For students, we organized a tour of the traveling classroom, a transformer 2.0, and a change room of still working appliances at the school. For the final task, the students produced have prepared models of energy houses um, in recent years where they have demonstrated how we can handle energy appropriately and consequently reduce the environmental impact. The long term goal we won't be able to achieve in one school year is to establish and build an outdoor classroom. This picture, first picture, shows the new dustbins we got last week. The picture next to it shows products that students made from waste materials in the biology course when we were dealing with humans. As I mentioned earlier, the secondary school of woodworking is involved in the project Wood Phoenix. Find out more about this project a little later. Finally, I would like to present plans for the future. As we want to become one of the carbon neutral schools, we will plan and introduce circularity at school and at home. As part of the PCV's project, we will follow the action plan and the objective set. And at the end, we will review and present the effects of the action set. We will continue to participate in sustainable projects such as an air soul, immobility. We're going to set up an outdoor classroom. We will establish an educational and development center for automation, robotics and digitalization and optimize water electricity, space heating, school center, and ventilation of premises. We will continue to actively work with various interested companies and with social partners. Cooperation will focus on a joint effort to reduce the carbon footprint. For students, we will be calling for final tasks that include a sustainable approach, environmentally friendly technologies, nature conservation. The areas of content that have the greatest potential for sustainable development at school center are energy, planning, digitalization, and monitoring of energy consumption, drinking water, ventilation, heating, etc. Woodworking and the use of waste as a source of energy. Sustainable mobility in connecting the locations of school center Trata and Podlubnik for students and teachers 
my bike, his scooter, his vehicle. Uh, special attention will be given to the improvement of waste separation on ecological islands um, and cooperation with social institutions such as nursing homes, social services, assistance in repairing and reusing furniture and appliances. Here are websites and contacts where you can find more information about this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vesna, for your presentation. Um, I think next we have an expert panel in which three experts will tell us more about their topics in a brief time frame. I will introduce each one uh, once it's their turn to speak. So first up, it's Ms. Katja Babic. She is a PhD QMS specialist who works at the company Lockridge Metallurgy and is in charge of the quality department. Key areas of her work or projects are the establishment of integrated management system, sustainability and implementation of SAO standards. She will tell us more about sustainable thinking practice in the case of the Lockridge Metallurgy Company. Katja, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hi. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I will share my screen. Hope you everyone uh, see this. Okay. Hello, my name is Katya. Uh, I'm Katya, Katya yes. sorry, we can see your PowerPoint window, but not the full screen presentation. Um, hmm. Same problem. Mm -hmm. Maybe now, or I don't know what is the problem. I think you first have to start the full screen and then share your screen and choose just the full screen presentation as the window you want to share. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Huh. Maybe you can now stop sharing the screen and then restart sharing and just pick the full screen presentation that's open right now. Otherwise, you can just share your whole screen and then we should be able to see everything. Mm. Sorry, maybe once again, yeah. because uh, I was focusing my presentation. Uh, sorry, because you uh, can I previous try. I uh -huh. think you so should stop sharing your screen now and try yes. to then start again sharing and just choose your full screen presentation or you can choose to just share your whole screen with us so we can see everything share screen oh now you see yes now we can see it. thank you oh, okay okay thank you sorry about that uh, as uh, can present me, uh, I'm responsible for quality management system in Lutich metrology. I'm also responsible for sustainability. I measure CO2 in our group uh, and uh, so on. I will show you more about this later. Yeah. I don't know why it's not moved on. Okay. Um, about Lutrich Metrology, today I will pre present you our uh, group uh, and what we do for sustainability. Uh, what is mean metrology? 
uh, metrology uh, start when a baby is born. Our lives start with metrology. When a baby is born, you gently wait and measure. Uh, in our group, we're working in medicine, in traffic, in purchasing, and we offer also our product to sustainable industry. What is our vision? Our vision is when you think of measurement, you think of outreach metrology. We cover all metrological needs. We offer services such as calibration, testing, conformity assessment, control and certification of product and management system. We also offer our two products, uh, Tramas and Exactum. Tramas is more uh, in, uh, we offer uh, Tramas for, for example, in industry to reduce waste. One of our customers is, for example, not isolation. Uh, and Exactum uh, measure environmental parameters such as humidity, pressure, and temperature. Uh, our uh, company start, uh, uh, we are family, actually we are family business, which uh, operates in uh, nine uh, companies and we are in seven countries. Three companies are in Slovenia, Lotrich Meroslovia, Lotrich Certificiranja in Pesava Merini Sistemi. And others are in uh, other countries, in uh, Germany, Austria, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, Serbia, and Macedonia. So what we are working, now we are working in sustainability. Um, what we do for sustainability, first we start with, uh, we prepare sustainable business strategy. And now we are implementing it into practice. With sustainability activities such as optimization of business trips, uh, we, are, we want to digitalize our processes. We um, move uh, from paper uh, certificate. Certificate is, for example, result of uh, calibration. And when we send to our customer certificate, we send it in, it in only in uh, a version. Um, so with sustainability activities, we minimize the CO2. Uh, as I said, we measure carbon footprint and uh, now we are working on uh, developing CALSA analysis of our two products, uh, which I mentioned before for Tramas and Exactum. And we finished in the previous year, year with energy renovation of building in Lutis Certificirania in Zelizmik. What else we do for sustainability? We set KPIs for, uh, based on ESG. Uh, all the time we want to offset in carbon emissions. Uh, we also set up two charging stations for electric cars in Celsa uh, in town uh, Zelizniki. Uh, the plan is to build also uh, solar panels on the top of the roof uh, in uh, Lutich Certificirania building. And we want to implement ISO 14001 into our uh, management system and to offer more uh, sustainable product to our customers, Trames and Exactum. This picture very beautiful uh, sum up what I said. We're working on optimization of business trips, waste reduction, innovative sustainable product with the goal to minimize CO2. Uh, emissions. This is from uh, my side and from Lutich Metrology. Thank you, Katya. Welcome. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, next up, we have Ms. Katarina Klobocznik, MS Science, Industrial Design. She's going to present the company IPLES in the field of smart and sustainable interiors. She's responsible for industrial product design in the field of own brand product development and de development projects. Katarina, the floor is yours now. Hello, everybody. Um, I'll turn on the presentation. OK, 
have it. Is it okay? Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Uh, so I'm talking about uh, um, the vision of Alplis uh, towards more uh, smart and sustainable interiors. Um, uh, I'm talking like in a timetable from before to now uh, to introduce our company a bit too. Uh, and I'm focusing not so much to this distant uh, uh, future when we live on Mars or we, we live uh, in, in uh, uh, the, uh, uh, with the, um, what happens because of um, uh, um, the, the pollution, it's the nearby future. Um, so uh, our company was founded in 1955. Um, it's a team of 140 employees. Uh, we are located in Zelezniki in Slovenia. Um, we are a, social, uh, a socially and ecologically uh, responsible company. And our place also means an established brand, an established furniture brand. So uh, our mission, it is to help people creating a, a home of their dreams. Um, our vision is uh, to become best partner at creating interiors for, for uh, the whole uh, house uh, in Slovenia and wider region of Europe. Um, and our values are high quality living and well being for everybody. Uh, our products uh, are based on experience and tradition, which means knowing customers, markets, uh, and technologies. Um, uh, the personal approach, uh, we are focusing on offering a functional uh, and healthy living uh, environment. Um, we are um, circular design um, uh, uh, oriented. Uh, and we follow trends and design. Uh, actually, we have a passion for innovation. Um, our products uh, belong to three um, segments. One is uh, the Alplist brand. Uh, the other one is engineering. And the third one is development projects and research. Uh, with with uh, an aim to be to become a part of uh, our place brand and engineering one day um so uh, uh with the brand we are produ producing modular uh, modular furniture uh and we are also focused to built in wardrobes and custom furniture and kitchens so we are offering um, uh, personalized furniture for the whole house uh, in an industrial way. Um, now here is a quick introduction uh, of our brand. We are producing modular, uh, modular furniture, built in wood rows and kitchens in individual personal styles. Um, I'll please, uh, taking care of home is a part of basic culture for our place, um, which is also located in residential uh, uh, environment of many uh, employees, including me. Um, so our place is already uh, a, a part of green um, uh, network of Slovenia. Uh, we are using certified wood panels uh we are um we are trying to uh use timeless design uh even though uh, we all uh, and uh, quality manufacturing uh even though um, that people uh, even though people want fashion too it's just the fact um we are obligated uh, we are uh, obligated to resell, uh, recycling uh, the cardboard um, our development projects are focused to sustainability of interiors, and we are trying really hard uh, to, to uh, um, get digital control of energy consumption. So, um, 
uh, our uh, development, our products uh, are based in tra on tradition, uh, communication, um, knowing trends and uh, our own cr uh, creativity, um, uh, innovation, and also use of digital, uh, digital technologies. Um, here are some uh, um, innovation from the last one, two or two years. Uh, so this, uh, uh, at the beginning, uh, you see the protective technology um, protection against uh, radio frequency, uh, electromagnetic um, uh, fields of, of our uh, phones. Uh, it's uh, already on the market. Um, it's the bed and the night table for kids' room. Uh, uh, the point is that we are... Uh, uh, we are uh, able to use our phones, but at night we are not um, uh, under uh, the electromagnetic um, uh, um, uh, uh, frequencies. Um, then, uh, less than a year ago, we stopped. Uh, we finished furnishing the whole smart house. Uh, for multimodal uh, lifestyle. It's a self-sufficient home, which is located in Maribor uh, in uh, Marla's company. Uh, we furnished uh, the whole house, which can be in use 20, uh, 24 hours a day. Um, we started, we actually um, stepped in um, uh, making furniture for office too. From, from this point. Um, then we were uh, um, uh, trying uh, uh, emotional engineering. We designed a uh, phone application. Uh, we designed um, uh, uh, the piece of furniture uh, of, uh, with messy wood, uh, with uh, materials with natural textures and added chromotherapy, aromatherapy and sound therapy to furniture. Um, then we were we were trying uh, new uh, furniture functions, also with uh, smart uh, kitchen pantry for managing foods and, cre and creating shopping lists, which are uh, available everywhere. We have a phone. Um, then uh, we are working on uh, making new materials uh, from our own uh, uh, residues. Um, uh, and um, we, uh, uh, in, in uh, last year, we made the progress on digital transformation uh, in every level of our business. Uh, in the future, uh, we want to keep on um, uh, thinking sustainability in research and design adding this to our markets, to our brand, uh, uh, also use it with engineering. Uh, then we are um, uh, keeping up with digitalization and uh, uh, controlling efficiency of uh, 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 the use of energy and the materials in, in our production, uh, and also to, uh, to communicate uh, with our with everybody easier and better. That was uh, everything from uh, our place. Uh, you can visit uh, us on uh, our place dot si uh, website. Um, you're welcome, and thank you. Thank you very much, Katarina, for your presentation. Thank you very much for your invitation. Thank you. Um, if you could send maybe all of the speakers your links that you want me to showcase on our project website, please send them to me and then I will uh, collect them where we also will upload this recording of the webinar. OK, so all of our uh, listeners can then go to your websites and uh, receive more information. Okay. So our final speaker for the expert panel is now Mr. Dimitri Yeray. He's an architect and he's a teacher for art and design at constructions in the school center Skofia Loka. The fields of his work are architecture, interior design, furniture design, and photography. 
His sustainable oriented projects are the Wooden Phoenix Project and Alp Trees. And he will now tell us more about the Wooden Phoenix Project. So Dimitri, the floor is yours. Come on, come on. Oh, hello, everybody. Uh, just give me a second to share the screen. Okay. Uh, is it uh, my presentation first page? We, we cannot uh, see your zero. presentation yet. You cannot? Oh, sorry. Now we can see it. Thank you. Now you can see it. So, uh, <clears throat> hello again. Uh, my name is Dimitri. I'm teacher in uh, uh, Shkofa School Center Woodworking Unit. As you heard, I'm an architect, and uh, now I will speak about one project. Uh, we call them it uh, the Wooden Phoenix. Um, this project was active from uh, uh, 2019 to, to 2020. Um, so in my presentation, uh, I will actually uh, speak about the uh, situation, uh, the reason uh, why uh, we were part of this kind of project uh, about our partners, goals. Um, and then I will show you how from, uh, from our point of view, school view, how we developed um, uh, it and implement. And uh, in the end, I will show you some one feedback. Uh, on this project. So, uh, uh, actually, um, this uh, is uh, the reason uh, why this picture show, is, show, is showing us, uh, are showing us the reason why we are, <clears throat> why we uh, were participating in this project. Actually, MSORA is a prominent Slovenian window manufacturing company, um, faced the fact that uh, in many cases, the old window replaced with the new one uh, is not without potential anymore. So uh, a question arose how to reuse um, a replaced window uh, or in uh, general, how to reuse used wood in their uh, manufacturing process. Uh, and uh, next step was, uh, so uh, actually it's, um, so we were, we were dealing with uh, uh, terms like uh, used wood, wood uh, residues, and um, uh, about the, these two terms were for us uh, the most important. Um, uh, actually, the fact is that all these materials, in most cases, majority cases, end up in uh, in uh, in the fire, landfills, or in uh, domestic industrial furnaces. Uh, so how to reuse it? That was actually uh, you know, uh, beginning uh, challenge. Um, and uh, this uh, partners, um, so um, uh, some partners uh, around MSORA actually decided to carry out a, an uh, experimental uh, project on this topic, used wood. Uh, that was our base. Uh, these partners uh, partners were five: uh, Locatur, uh, Locatur uh, Agency for uh, is actually social enterprise, uh, 
which is dealing with uh, tourism, and then MSORA, as I told you, and then also municipality of uh, Jiri, uh, one of the smallest municipality uh, in Slovenia, and uh, the SORA development uh, agency, which cover area of Škofja Loka, Jiri, Železniki, Vorenia Vas, Pliane, towns around uh, nearby. Uh, and uh, in the end, also Škofja Loka School Center. Um, so this uh, group of partners uh, defined um, goals. We wanted that goals are very clear. So first one is, and the most important is, let's reuse wood. Uh, next one was uh, from this wood, let's make urban furniture, new products, which we decided uh, would be urban furniture, like benches and so on. And uh, this urban furniture, uh, we, uh, of course, uh, because uh, of partner, stru partner structure will would be implemented uh, in uh, municipality uh, in uh, the city and surrounding and uh, uh, school uh, school center of Shkofi uh, would uh, secondary school for uh, wood engineering uh, will develop design uh, for urban furniture uh, ideas designs and MSORA will produce uh, or develop further, implement this urban furniture. And in the end, uh, we organized, the goal was to organize several events for raising awareness of the local population about importance of uh, reusing of wood. Uh, in this uh, stage, we were collaborating with, uh, with the Association of Ecologists Without Borders. They organized uh, uh, also uh, uh, these this events. Okay, so goals. Uh, next, uh, uh, next uh, slide is about um, presentation of this project. Uh, we made usually every year, uh, we have uh, one main uh, in the school, we decided for one main, main uh, team. And in the end, we uh, publish a brochure with projects. And uh, that year, 2020, uh, uh, brochure was uh, about uh, reusing, um, uh, re reusing wood. Uh, if I press here, uh, I hope I will be successful. Uh -huh. So uh, this uh, book or brochure or PDF is uh, published on, in our on our web page, uh, like other brochures from other from uh, other uh, years. So uh, you can uh, actually, uh, from the beginning, we uh, very, very shortly explained our creative process and um, the main text was about uh, uh, recycling and Phoenix project. And uh, uh, then we um, uh, showed, uh, published uh, many examples, uh, many uh, proposals of our students uh, from drawing to prototypes and uh, that, uh, which were uh, uh, like um, um, possible solution. But in the end, uh, we decided to uh, choose uh, this uh, this uh, solution this proposal this bench from uh, girl eva koker 
Um, and uh, M. Sora uh, uh, took this uh, uh, design and developed it, uh, developed construction and implemented. So uh, in the end, the result was something uh, like this. It was in the, in the beginning. You can see it was um, a result in the middle of the winter was uh, like this. So um, you know, I think we, we um, implemented uh, approximately 20 benches, not just these two around the uh, municipality of Chiri. Uh, so, uh, I go back from here. Uh, no. Uh, yeah. So, uh, this is, uh, mm, let's say picture from uh, from spring without snow. Um, uh, in the end, uh, of course, we, like we said, we were, um, we tried to speak with people about these ideas, about these uh, projects, about results, about problems we had. And um, in the end, we also registered our um, project to um, European competition uh, named uh, Rural Inspiration Awards. And from 17 uh, projects, Slovenian, 18, uh, eight were sent to Brussels. And we, uh, the, we've been the only uh, project uh, placed in the category called uh, Green Future. So um, uh, we we didn't we we didn't uh, win, but um, uh, in the end we won the the, the uh, we, we got prize for the best project at the central European European level, and um, uh, we were also surprised uh, that um, our project was. Um, published in many uh, quite known uh, magazines or uh, newspapers. So uh, uh, actually project was quite uh, complex, uh, but uh, on the other side, uh, very interesting. And uh, also students were very focused uh, uh, for teacher, this is quite important. So uh, I hope uh, uh, my presentation was clear enough for other questions. You can write me also if you want. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation, Dimitri. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you. So, um, now this was our expert panel, but we have one final keynote from Mr. Horacio Albano from Italy, and he will tell us more about blue transformation for sustainable thinking in Mediterranean and Africa. So Horacio, the floor is yours now. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Perfect. Um, I will just introduce myself and uh, the panel that I'm going to carry on. And uh, I'm... Um, a consultant for uh, fisheries and aquaculture. And uh, I dedicated my life uh, uh, really for the um, a sustainability of the production in the ocean, in the Mediterranean uh, area and Africa. And um, I think it's um, really important uh, to consider our ocean, our, um, our um, crucial resource for food at the same times we need to looking at the future and um, uh, see all the uh, problems that the ocean are suffering in terms of pollution in terms of pressure in terms of uh, 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 marine resource uh, 
uh, decreasing, uh, and this is uh, a really a problem of the last uh, uh, 15 years. So very short time that are creating uh, some big issue to our ocean. So letting in the sustainable way to uh, creating uh, an important source of food at the same time to protect our ocean. I will just uh, share my screen and uh, give you some uh, view and example of the sector. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Perfect. So the, um, the, the aquatic food system is uh, one of the most important uh, food source of the global speaking. And the uh, Mediterranean is uh, really in the center of the tradition of the, um, uh, the blue food production. A Mediterranean have an historical tradition of fishing and uh, in a really particular environment. Uh, um, the biodiversity in Mediterranean is uh, really, really high respect to the uh, several um, other uh, sea and ocean in the world. And uh, the tradition of fishing is uh, really an ancient tradition uh, that uh, the fishers are uh, um, really um, uh, pass uh, through the centuries and evolved in the last uh, uh, century with technology. So a lot of uh, um, changement in our Mediterranean in the last uh, uh, century with uh, a really big changement of the impact of the fishing on the marine resource. So let's thinking different. Uh, we need to prevent problems. We need to think different if we want to produce in sustainable way our fish and uh, supply our fish on the on the, our uh, fish counters uh, in uh, in Europe. Uh, just to give you um, a small example, uh, Europe uh, actually is importing more than eighty percent of the fish consumed uh, internally. Uh, uh, in Europe, and um, the rest, less than 20%, is uh, produced by the countries with uh, particular uh, production in Mediterranean. So it's a, a really uh, a particular scenario, and uh, it's really correlated also to the African countries, uh, because uh, we share some part of the Mediterranean, and at the same time, the, pro the internal production in Africa can really grow uh, in this uh, sector in the very new waves. Uh, and um, best practice uh, can be shared in Africa to don't um, uh, make the same mistake that we made you know, in the past uh, in, uh, in Europe and Mediterranean. So I will just uh, give you some idea about the blue economy. Consider that the blue economy is not only fishing, is not only, only the seafood production, but it's including several activity. And uh, it's a very interesting concept because uh, if we consider only seafood uh, and fisheries in our coastal community, we are losing a lot of synergies. If we consider our fishers in the corner of the harbor, we are losing a lot of connection. Fishing need to be uh, integrated with the other activity of the coastal community, tourism, value chain, uh, cultural heritage. In this way, we create uh, a sustainable economy. I want to just uh, give you one of the definition of the blue economy, because unfortunately we have several definition. I choose the one that is very practical, one of the World Bank, uh, and sustainable and integrated development of the economic sector in healthy oceans, sustainable use of ocean resource for economic growth, improved livelihoods and jobs. It means that this blue economy really to thinking about uh, the, the ocean uh, need to give a, a resource to the, to the people that are uh, um, living on the coast and are trying to give 
a sustainable economy for the for the coastal community at the same time trying to found uh, activity that can support the economy and in this activity of course are including export uh, and are including uh, environmental services uh, port and arbus management there are a lot of activity tourism everything is correlated to the cost so the values are uh, really high we are talking about from 2.5 to 6 trillions of dollars uh, in the world coming from the costs. So is uh, um, uh, considering that uh, the cost is uh, um, the really um, crucial points uh, for the economy. So this is uh, uh, the importance of the cost, but at the same time, we need to thinking about uh, uh, how we can manage sustainable this uh, uh, this cost and um, I I really follow a concept of the FAO uh, just coming from last year that is the concept of blue transformation for the next uh, uh, decades and uh, in the next decades what we can see that the food and fish price are uh, really um, uh, coming up in terms of price and in terms of dem demands and uh, this is could be a problem because uh, sometimes we force ourselves to produce food but we are not thinking about uh, uh, the problem that we can provide to the environment and um, unfortunately the fishing activity are uh, really um, in a bad period the fishing is going down the economy of fishing also the, re the marine resources are decreasing and the, almost of the stock of fish are over exploited. So the alternative is uh, to thinking about how we can produce seafood in our uh, scenario and aquaculture could be the solution. Aquaculture need uh, to be considered like uh, a good alternative for fishing. And uh, at the same time, we need to make uh, an, um, a, a very strong consideration to don't create an impact for aquaculture. And uh, what is aquaculture, just uh, briefly, is the production of uh, fish, crustacean, mollusk, seaweeds, um, through uh, an action of the human on the environment, uh, providing uh, the um, juveniles from uh, an artificial reproduction since to the uh, production of the commercial sides of the seafood of the seaweeds that we are producing. So uh, like was done for the animals uh, in the past uh, and uh, you know to for the for dairy for chicken production now is necessary to do also for the seafoods and um, just few results uh, uh, in um, in this uh, 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 FAO presentation we can see in orange how the fishing is uh, um, let be uh, getting some increasing of terms of uh, catch uh, with the new technology but uh, is not growing anymore and is uh, stable and sometimes it really increase and uh, aquaculture is growing aquaculture is the new front of the seafood production and uh, I want to just give you a practical example. It's a project that uh, uh, I'm involved uh, uh, in long-term project, let's say, I work for uh, this company in south of Italy that is called the Mare Vivo. I worked uh, um, since uh, 19, uh, to, uh, 2012, so one decade of experience of this uh, uh, project. Um, and uh, the characteristic of the company that is located in very south part of Italy. So uh, you can image, uh, uh, you know, the, um, the market uh, logistic. Uh, uh, but what is very important is to consider that uh, in this case, the project was uh, sustained by grant of the fishery fund uh, uh, dedicated uh, to the sector and in particular, um, this fund uh, of the European Union uh, was supporting uh, uh, the new initiative for aquaculture and uh, the new initiative for uh, uh, value chain 
uh, in particular for the company that are located in the south part of Mediterranean. And um, the project was uh, uh, correlated also to the environmental sustainability. Uh, the company is also certified for the international standard of Friend of the Sea and uh, is producing uh, uh, blue mussel. Uh, blue mussel are mollusks. Um, is a, a kind of aquaculture based on uh, some long line uh, in open sea. Is a system, very simple system, some rope uh, and some buoys that are sustained uh, this uh, um, uh, uh, floating uh, culture of uh, uh, mussel. Mussel uh, um, is very interesting uh, species for aquaculture because it is not requiring any uh, input of feed, artificial feed and external feed output. Mussels are just filtering the water, taking all the um, nutrients from the, uh, from the uh, marine water. So the impact of this uh, um, aquaculture farm are uh, uh, almost zero. Sometimes we are creating benefit to the environment, almost the time, let's say, because in this area uh, is prohibited to uh, do fishing, so we are creating some nursery for uh, several species and also uh, supporting uh, uh, the, um, uh, the carrying capacity of the, the area. And uh, this is a very important aspect because we con can consider a uh, master farm like uh, a nursery for several species that are growing in this area. I want to just show you a video uh, of the project and the company. Can you see the video? Yes, we can see it. So this is Castro, the small village in the really last part of Italy in South in an amazing environment. This is a small harbor, fishing harbor.
So can you see again the presentation? Yes. Perfect. So the video was showing uh, how the, um, a company can uh, really thinking about the production in the sea with a big responsibility because uh, the impact uh, of the ocean uh, is uh, really correlated uh, to our activity. And uh, if we are damaging the sea, we don't have future for, the, uh, for our company, for our production. And we have big responsibility also for the coastal community uh, that uh, we are part and um, uh, including, uh, uh, you know, all the um, social aspect, environmental aspect, and of course, the economies, uh, uh, economic sustainability of our future activity. So the, um, the, uh, what is the, um, the important things of this project, of this uh, company supported by the European Fund for, the, for Fisheries and Aquaculture? That the, um, the, the first of all the results some some numbers, uh, Marivivo actually is uh, get two hundred employees in one small coastal uh, community where is not other alternatives uh, in terms of industry in terms of uh, other kind of uh, uh, comp um, uh, factories and uh, other. Uh, um, companies that can have an alternatives uh, for other production. Food production is for sure an important pillar of the economy of South Italy. And uh, apart of the turnovers uh, of the that the companies is growing and uh, the quantity of uh, uh, mollusk on the market uh, that is uh, reaching almost uh, 1,000 1, tons uh, per year, what is important for this project is uh, uh, to consider um, to uh, uh, produce quality food and sustainable food. And uh, the, ch the big challenge that, uh, of our project was to, um, to enter in the market with sustainable products uh, and good quality products, let's say. Uh, of course, because the company is uh, in uh, um, very extremely south of Italy, so you need connection for logistic, but at the same time, you need to create a network uh, and uh, you enter in the um, big players of distribution. So all the supermarket in Italy, in the, in the region, in the Apulia region, in the first step in, in the national market in Italy and after uh, uh, to um, be ambitious and arrive to the international market. And uh, of course, uh, um, a quality production have high cost. So you need to do a lot of uh, action of branding, action of, uh, uh, you know, uh, discussion with the, the big player of the distribution. And uh, in, also in this case, uh, um, some project supported us uh, uh, in the view of the, uh, the blue economy and uh, the European Union support for the aquaculture sector. Uh, but anyway, the, the results uh, was uh, um, really good. Uh, is uh, the company now is a big player in distribution. And uh, the other issue uh, is that the supermarket, uh, they want standard quality for all the years. Uh, and, uh, you know, to, uh, to produce muscle, you need to respect a biological cycle. So you need to respect the natural time. And uh, this is no, was not easy at all because the supermarket want the same product every day. And uh, for this reason, we start to uh, uh, do um, a project for partnership uh, that can support us in production. And, uh, um, we got partners, strong partners in Italy, in Greece, and in, uh, in Greece is a, a, a really family company like uh, Mare Vivo, so it's our historical partner for muscle production in Greece. At the same time, we get uh, uh, Amegrove, uh, another 
cooperative in uh, Galicia in, in, in Spain. So how you can see, we put together uh, with the same view of project, Spain, Italy, Greece, uh, to produce uh, uh, muscle. And uh, we started the new plant uh, of muscle farming, uh, uh, always in the same bay, but uh, really in open sea, to import uh, commercial sized muscle and uh, to um, guest this muscle in our bay for at least for one month to create the same quality all the year with uh, different production uh, and different uh, producer involved in this value chain. Because of course the market is paying all our effort. So the value chain need to be considered uh, the most important part of our uh, economic uh, sustainability. And uh, uh, we strongly believe that only with partnership, we can grow uh, our strategy. We can uh, um, build our market and the solid base uh, with uh, uh, the distribution uh, in, uh, in our market. So the, uh, the work didn't finish yet because uh, actually we are involved in another project to found the partners uh, also uh, in Africa uh, because we are uh, really in the center of Mediterranean. Uh, our partnership is not uh, concluded yet. For example, uh, just two weeks ago, I was uh, in uh, Morocco. Uh, Morocco have a great potential to grow uh, in terms of aquaculture production and, mo and mollusk farming. Uh, and uh, we start to implement our network of partners uh, in Agadir, in central Morocco, and in Dakla, in, uh, uh, really in south uh, of West Sahara, uh, where they have uh, a very uh, interesting uh, condition to start uh, aquaculture. And uh, what we can, uh, uh, of course, partnership is not a, only an economic partnership, but we uh, are trying to uh, provide our best practice, our experience, and uh, uh, to the same time, open a new source of products, a new source of seafood. Just to follow what we said before, we are in Europe, we are importing 80% of uh, seafood that we are eating. So we really need uh, some uh, strong partnership. To build a partnership, I think it's very important to transfer our values. And uh, our values are based on uh, sustainability, uh, respect of the ocean, and uh, uh, production of quality uh, seafood. So uh, this is, was my contribution. I really hope... Uh, uh, that I give you uh, uh, an overview of our uh, specific sector of the blue economy. Uh, I can share my presentation. You have my contact here in the, uh, in the slide. And anyway, I'm available for uh, every question from your side. Um, thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Horacio, for your presentation as well. We are perfectly in time, actually. Um, so for our last task, this is for the audience. I would like to ask you for some feedback. So I will now share my screen. And you can hopefully now see my second screen with the Masterclass Webinar Feedback Module, where you can scan uh, the QR code or my colleague will post also the link in the chat as well as the code so you can all go to Mentimeter and type in your takeaway of today's webinar. If there should be any questions arising from your side towards our speakers, I will of course pass them on or you also saw all the contact information and you can contact them directly. So I will give you a few moments just to go to the Mentimeter and to type in what your takeaway of today is. Two seconds, sorry. Yes. Okay, so I can already see some answers here. 
uh, what is your takeaway of today's webinar? So safety ocean is very important. We heard that with the blue movement, aquacultures was an important keyword. Uh, we had some recycling projects today. Sustainable materials are very important. And to save the materials in product, probably this means in production. Uh, circular product design, we heard about that in the beginning, about fast fashion and so on. Uh, cooperation and partnership are very interesting keywords as well. Uh, recycling projects, we heard about them. Sustainability is a big, big point for you. Uh, CO2, probably CO2 reduction as well. Blue economy, I can see a lot of new information. Yes, I agree, because we had so many experts here today who kindly shared with us their current projects. And if anything was too fast for you, no worries. This webinar will be published as video on our website, so you can go back and rewatch it in your own time as well. Uh, some new keywords are appearing. So today there is a lot happening. Uh, wood is a keyword that we can see. Innovation is big. Uh, let's see, reuse is a keyword. Great practical or practice examples, good practices. I can see networking. I can see project, partnership, rethinking, yes, rethinking our ways of life and green business models. Okay, thank you all so much. I will just jump back to my presentation because as you may know, we have a second feedback measure. Um, this is a little bit more formal. It's a Google form, which we ask you to complete now or shortly after this webinar, just to help us see how we did and if you really benefited from our webinars. So this concludes our webinar series. We had four modules. I'm very happy that I was able to be a host. And yeah, as I said, this video will be published on our website. And please feel free to stay in touch with our Green Collider project. We have a website, but maybe my colleague can post the link again in the chat. And we are also on Facebook and other social media. So please stay in touch. Don't be a stranger. And thank you so much for being here. Also to our really, really great experts who presented their keynotes today. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.